Welcome to my video on OBS Multiplatform. In this video, I will show you where to get OBS Multiplatform, um, what it is, as well as some functions that I have noticed. Depending on how this video goes, I will be doing a installation video on how to install OBS Multiplatform on Linux, specifically Ubuntu, and Mac OS X. Alright, so first we're going to go to obsproject.com and normally if you were to get OBS, you would choose the beta version, which is on the left side. But because we're choosing to get the newer version or the successor, we are going to choose OBS multi-platform Windows 7 and 8. So once you fully download the OBS multi-platform EXE, run it and then you will be able to install the whole entire uh, program. Now after you install the program we'll get into the description on how everything works and how everything looks. All the links will be in the description below so it will be a lot easier for you to follow along. I may have a shortened link for the actual install file. I'm not sure if YouTube will let me do it. So, This is OBS on the left, which is the OBS beta version, and this is OBS multi-platform, which is the on the right, which is the newer successor version. So we will be going through the some detailed information on the changes between the two. But first, what exactly is OBS multi-platform? Well, OBS multi-platform is, in layman's terms, OBS 2.0. So it's the successor to the original software, OBS. More stable, it has better performance, and it's going to have a lot more functionality than the previous version does. So in, future, in the future, OBS beta may not be there, and it may just be OBS multi-platform. So as you can see, the interface is a lot different between OBS and OBS multi-platform. For starters, you have three columns in OBS multi-platform, whereas you only have two columns in OBS. One really great change that I see is, say I want to add a scene, but then I want to see what that will look like when I actually start recording or start broadcasting. Now, instead of previewing the stream, it automatically previews the stream, which is a huge, huge, huge benefit for me. Because then I'm able to actually edit everything prior to actually streaming so it doesn't take up any time right when I start streaming, which I think is really great. Another great addition to these source selection is you have global sources already there. So if you have a source already set in one location, it will become a global source automatically instead of having to add a global source like you used to previously do in OBS. I think the biggest change and the most progressive change that I've seen so far in OBS multi-platform is the functionality of the audio. Now, previously, the audio used to be right above where settings and start broadcasting was. It's not anymore, it's is an own column. And in this column, it's a lot more advanced. So I can actually edit my audio sources right in the interface. Now for me, that's really great. I think that for a lot of people it will help them out as far as making YouTube videos if they do record uh, on a local file while they're streaming or if they just record a local file they can and it's just the game they can just delete that commentary that they were doing like a hundred percent and just have the game audio because it has its own separate tracks some of these extra settings are really great. I'll go into a little bit of detail. Like here, what you can do is change what track you want to have everything set on. So if I want my 
desktop audio or my game audio on track one, then it will be in track one, and then I uncheck the others. If I want my mic on track two, I just check track two, and I get rid of the other ones. And just doing it easily and simply is a really great function. And now, if I really want to, I can make a video, delete my commentary if I was streaming, for example, and just upload that whole entire video to YouTube without any problem, without any extra editing, other than deleting that second audio track. Another cool, like, little addition that isn't, like, a huge serious thing, but I think is actually really nice, is they have a CPU usage information at the bottom right. Now this, for me, I love knowing how many resources I use just because I want to make sure that I'm not, you know, putting too much strain on my computer. But with this, I just look at it and I can say, okay, I'm using this much CPU just with OBS. So I know this game is going to be taking up a lot. Maybe I should reduce the quality or re lower the quality of the stream so then I'm not using too much. There are a couple things that I don't really know what the functions are, even though they may sound pretty descriptive, like the audio input capture and audio output capture. I'm not really sure how to use those, so if I come up with any new information, I will definitely uh, put any information in the description below. As you can see, adding scenes is just the same as it was, you just add a scene. Now to get into more advanced kind of stuff, we're going to go into the settings on both and kind of compare them so you guys know what the difference is between the two. Anything they added, anything they removed, stuff like that. They've added a GUI type settings menu to uh, OBS multi-platform and they added a couple things like the theme. It's not a big deal, but I personally like it just because I like a darker theme instead of a lighter theme. So instead of having a broadcast settings tab, now you have a stream tab. So it's a lot cleaner. So you have just your basic information, what streaming sources you you want to stream to, if you want to have a local file only, those kind of things. And I feel like that kind of functionality where it's a lot cleaner makes the program itself look a lot better. So here, what you have is your stream key, what location you want to stream to, which is the server, stuff like that. And what I really like is they added the ability to show the stream key for anybody who is probably having problems uh, actually streaming, saying that it's wrong or something like that. So now let's talk about output. In output, the simple settings are just the bottom half of the broadcast settings in regular OBS. Another thing is they kind of reduced the amount of tabs that there are now. Because if you were to go to output advanced, they basically take the bottom half of broadcast settings, video, and uh, or some aspects of video and also audio uh, tab in uh, the previous version of OBS.
video tab is about the same as it was in the previous version. The one thing I'm kind of confused about in OBS multi-platform in video settings is the rendering. I'm not sure if it's saying that I'm going to be rendering DirectX 3D11, which is the graphics card, or if the processor will be rendering because it's actually using X264. So that's something I'm still kind of confused about. Hotkeys is about the same, but it does have extra functionality, such as setting a hotkey to switch to a certain scene. Prior to this, you would have to right-click on the scene itself and then set a hotkey there in OBS, but now you can just set it in hotkeys. So let's change it to this right here. And unfortunately, because it's already set to uh, that scene on OBS, it changed it. Uh, sorry about that. That's kind of funny. Now, I'm not sure if this uh, stuff in the Advanced tab is actually anywhere in OBS. I haven't ever seen it, so I'm not really that sure. So I'm not actually sure what these functions are. If anyone has watched this and actually installed it all and have found other functionalities that I have not found, please let me know and in the description I will update it and add those uh, adi that additional information to it so then this video can stay as up to date as it possibly can. Some problems that I've seen is not all plugins are available. Um, for example, for me to actually get the CLR browser, which I use for chat, it was, I didn't see it at first, but then I had to scroll down and I'll go through on how to install it or uh, at, at least download it. Now, not all plugins are available for OBS multi-platform, but most likely they will all be updated and you will be used, you'll be able to use them later on. Thank you so much again for watching this video. Um, please keep me updated on whether there are things that I have missed or new things that I didn't even know about.